business coaching plus strategy for the modern day freight broker. Hey, it's Missy. I invite you to subscribe to my channel. So get some popcorn and let's binge watch all things freight brokerage. I'm helping you become the freight broker everyone loves. Hello everyone. Today we're going to be discussing the order of business for freight, a freight broker company. And this is probably going to be one of the most, I believe, one of the most beneficial videos I've ever done because I'm going to show the lifeline of the process from beginning to end. But before we get there, I want to share a little bit about myself. Again, if you have not been on this channel, my name is Melissa Wokolo. I started in this industry in the late 90s. Um, and I had no formal education. I was a high school dropout and someone gave me a chance and I can't say that it was all easy peasy up that ladder, but I was given an opportunity with an open door, um, because I used what I had. So I'm going to recommend to you that you can watch all the YouTube videos you want, but if you do not have passion, grit and a why of why you're on this earth what the reason was behind this, you will never become everything you are expected to become um, because you're not settling down and doing the work that it needs to in order to make this all work, right? Now, what is the order of business of a freight broker company? I'm going to start from the very, very beginning all the way to the very end and walk through the best way I can um, in regards to owning and operating a freight broker company. First and foremost, you have to, in order, what is a freight broker? A freight broker is someone who manages between a shipper and a carrier and receives a profit as a middleman, right? In order to be a freight broker, you have to either one, um, be an, an actual company that's signed up with the FMSCA as a licensed freight broker and that means you hold that freight broker license or you can go the route that i did i was an employee first for the first four years i was freight brokering and didn't even know i was a freight broker that's a story for another day and then i moved into being a freight broker agent for 14 years and then i became a freight broker owner so I took the route of experience because the industry did not warrant um, freight brokers as startups coming into the industry when I started. I don't know if I would have taken that same exact path if I would have looked back and had all the resources available to me when it comes to cash flow and other things that are super important um, because freight brokerage is a highly, highly intensive um, when it comes to cash flow, if I was to give you a recommendation, do not do it my way. I, I started on $21 and a hundred dollar loan, but I also had the backing of a freight broker that already had credit established. All right. So with that being said, let's dig in whether you are a freight broker company, this is, or an agent the, today, we're only going to be talking about a broker business as an owner okay as a startup first and foremost you need to get an ein it's free um, you can go to irs.gov and search for ein and before you do that though you want to check to see if your name is available at the secretary of state for your state so you might put um secretary of state business formation into google and then put your state um, you do not have to go through a service, but some people like to go through a corporate attorney. In my case, I did go through a corporate attorney because I didn't have any knowledge like this, but there's a lot of people out there that can help you as well as YouTube is a great resource as well. Once you have a corporation, for example, I tell everyone get a business plan, but if I could look back on my own journey, I can't really say that I had a business plan in, in place because my business plan was on a napkin at a Mexican restaurant called Bandito's and the very top of the napkin, number one, make enough money to take my grandma to the Grand Old Opry for her believing in me, right? That was number one. And I said to myself that if I made, you know, $5,000 a week, I would be happy. So if I made $20,000 a month, then that was my top. I, I couldn't think beyond that. And because of those 
um, limitations, I would say, it, it, I struggled in my growth plan. So I would strongly recommend you getting a standard operating procedure in place, putting a growth plan together, make sure your do's and don'ts. When we started our family business with my husband and my kids, um, we decided not to become have any agents. And it's just recently, recently that we have decided to bring agents on. But for the first seven years or five to seven years um, that the family owned the business, they did not have any agents. They decided to let the engine run, 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 right? An accountant, have an accountant in place. That was the first thing I did. I will tell you, I did do that. I did go out and get an accountant and I interviewed accountants. Accountants that sat with my own mindset who did not make me feel stupid because, again, I'm a high school dropout. I needed some help, right? So I wanted somebody who could talk like a fifth grader. So right, wrong, or different, that was what I decided for me. Legal and contracts, a lot of those things can be done over time. In the beginning, it is good to get somebody. There is like legal shield as well as legal um, legal websites that will help you with some of those contracts. However, having a corporate attorney in your back pocket for a couple thousand dollars is worth every penny in its penny. Again, I always say, let the shipper, let the shipper determine, and we'll talk about that later in today's video. Um, let the shipper dictate terms is my stance on that because we are just an LP, uh, LSP. I mean, we're just a logistic service provider. When you get into those 3PL and 4PL markets and your company starts to grow, definitely this is not the video. This is a startup video um, that is to talk to my experience and disclaimer, I am not an accountant. I am not an attorney that can give legal advice. But from my own standpoint, the less contracts you have as a startup or an LSP, the better that you are going to be in a position of not being liable for anything that happens because of a carrier's negligence. Um, and that has been something I stand by. I'm happy when I don't have a lot of um, those contracts in place, et cetera. But we'll talk about that later. Again, having your authority documents, your W-9 and the form that you need for a W-9 is the 2018 form. So up in the left-hand corner um, is a 2018 form. Um, so make sure that that is the W-9. Also ensure that every year at the beginning of the year that you re-sign a new one because shippers will ask for that. Um, having a contingent cargo policy is not necessarily necessary um, until you get into the negotiations with that shipper. Some shippers require a contingent cargo policy um, as, as you being a broker and some do not. And that is just, it's not, um, it is not something that the Federal Motor Carrier Division requires that you have. They require that you have a surety bond. Um, and again, this discussion is not about how to open up a freight brokerage, but the actual outline of the business. Then you can work on your branding picture. I mean, write your branding picture. Um, it doesn't have to be anything fancy. Canva.com is a really good resource. And down in the bottom, I will give you um, a link to that. It's a good resource to be able to build some of those branding pictures. Um, but, and, you know, that's the funny thing is, is that I have a lot of fun, right, um, with just being myself. And that glamorous um, idea of branding is not necessarily me. That professionalism is not me. Um, so why would I want to go out there and put those beautiful pictures out there that really have nothing um, to do with who I am as a person? So I do a lot of pictures that are just normal um, in the industry. Again, having a business phone number, a business email, and a website just builds credibility. Um, you can build those things yourself. A business phone number can be with a voice over IP provider. I've used Vonage Business for um, close to 20, some almost 20 years. So um, that is a voice over IP. Um, a business email, I use Google Workspace. I have used Outlook in the past, but Google Workspace has been working well for me as it evolved. I, um, but I did use 
Outlook for close to 15 years and was a big Outlook Microsoft person. Um, and then social media sites. Facebook page was something that, you know, I did in the beginning, but I'm more of a LinkedIn person now. And then building your logo, right? And again, you can use canva.com to build your logo. Now, setting up your customer packet, if you link here, um, you can now create this packet. But only time you can link here um, is if you're part of our community. If you're part of our community, I have a video and all the items to get that customer packet up and running, right? That's inside of our compendium and start of our community. So you'd want to go to our website at lacrownlogistics.com to get that. But if you're watching this video, um, you can just click here and it will take you right to how to set up a customer packet. Creating a customer packet, again, like I said, I do not believe in a shipper broker agreement. I think by forcing a shipper, this is my stance, disclaimer, I'm not an attorney, um, but I feel as a LSP, a logistics sales you know, partner uh, provider, which is not a 3PL, not a 4PL, and I'm not doing any kind of contractual, um, I'm just representing myself as a middleman that, that takes no possession of that freight. Um, I am going to take the stance of, I do not provide a broker shipper agreement. Don't do it. Only thing I provide is, um, of a, a cover page talking about me and our company, as well as, um, our payment terms based on a review of a credit of the shipper. And then I provide a W9. Um, I sometimes provide the authority, not usually unless they ask for it. Um, and then a, a th the authority is the paper that's given to you from the federal government or the federal motor carrier division saying that you are able to operate as a broker. So if that's what you're wanting to know what an authority is. And then a credit application. A credit application is pretty important because I want to know exactly what division that that uh, shipper wants me to bill, what um, what are their references, et cetera. And sometimes they fill it out. Sometimes they don't. Sometimes they send me their own, um, their own, um, finance sheet. Then I use services like Ansonia credit or trans credit or CompuNet credit in order to run a, a, a review on their, on their credit. Now, if you have a factoring company like Denim down in the bottom, um, Denim is one of the uh, most popular, I would say. I don't know if they're the largest, but they're the most popular um, partners for freight brokers when it comes to factoring. They would establish credit terms, but we'll talk about that later. Um, in step number three, you can set up your carrier packet. You can link here to set up your carrier packet. Um, if you're part of our community and inside that carrier packet, you are going to have a broker carrier agreement, a broker carrier agreement. And this is super, super important. It needs to be signed by the owner or a valid representative representer of um, their company. You can use companies like mycarrierpackets.com um, as that is a really good one. That's the one we use. Um, but you could also use um, Jotform. Um, Jotform was something that we used for a really long time when we first started out. Um, and it is, you get 100 packets for free that can be signed up. And what you do is, uh, Jotform is just a way of bringing in information that you now can be, you have usable that you can now vet, right? So if you want more information about that, down in the bottom, um, there is a product that you can buy that will show you how to set up that job form. Um, so you literally could run a freight brokerage for, I would say, you know, as long as you're not setting up more than 100 carriers a month, um, you could run it for practically free for a really long time, um, as long as you have the knowledge. And again, as long as you have the knowledge on how to vet a carrier. If you want the peace of mind, you could go with companies like RMIS that is owned by Truck Stop or My Carrier Packets. They are two of the leading um, leading properties in order to look for carrier packets. And again, two other services I recommend um, is Carrier Assure. 
um, owned by Cassandra Gaines, as well as Carrier 411, which is the oldest. Um, Carrier 411, they, these two products will help you bet and make great decisions when it comes to, um, to betting a carrier. Number four is to select a TMS software. Um, two of the major softwares that I would probably recommend, and again, down in the bottom, there is um, a link, or you can use the link on this PDF um, if you're part of our community, Ascend TMS and ITS Dispatch. I've used them both. They are both very well. Ascend is a little bit more expensive if you are growing a team. ITS Dispatch has a one one-stop shop, one fee, and you can have as many users. So that's kind of nice when you're starting out. Um, and ITS Dispatch, you know, beats its purpose. But when you want to get into some integrations um, like tracking and um, different integrations like Trucker Tools, I love Trucker Tools. That's a really good service. Um, trucker Tools as well as um Maybe when you get larger and you want to have a payment service like Triumph Pay um, that help you pay your carriers via ACH, they integrate as well. Um, there's a lot of integrations with Ascent TMS that is really quite nice, right? So now we get into number five, which is credit and cash flow. Are you self-funded or are you going to go with a factoring company? If you're part of our community, um, I can show you I have done it many, many times, hundreds of startup companies where I teach them how to be self-funded. Um, it is a slow burn, which means that it takes a while. So if you do not have cash flow to pay your personal bills, or if you are working at this job part-time while you have a full-time job, self-funded is a great route to go. Um, but if you're all in and need cash flow, I recommend, and again, I'm not an attorney and I'm not an accountant, but I recommend based on experience to go with a factoring company, somebody like Denim. All right. So why do you need cash flow? What is the reason why you need cash flow? Credit and cash flow has everything to do with making sure that you get paid so that you can pay your carriers. If you're self-funded, you would receive the funds um, and then you would pay your carrier. However, carriers are leery about using startup brokers because they're afraid they're not going to be paid. So there is a obstacle that you now have to overcome when it comes to being fearful for your business. If you do not like to talk about money, you're going to have a hard time here, right? It reminds me of being 18 years old and going into a car lot <laughs> and trying to get my first car. That's a story for another day, but that's the feeling you have and you have to do it day in and day out. It can be very tiresome. So having someone to partner with like Denim um, is a great resource to be able to say to your potential carrier, hey, I want to build that with you. I want to stand there with you. I want to stand and, and build this together so that you can build it in a great, great way. Now, building a relationship with a shipper and client um, is super, super important. So one of my favorites, um, CRMs, a CRM is a customer relationship management tool, and you're only as good as your tools, right? If you don't put the information in there and you don't have a solid plan, none of these tools are gonna work for you. But down in the bottom, you can grab my affiliate link for clothes because I do use clothes in Apollo as well. Um, and they are my favorite CRMs and I do use them both clothes more often than Apollo, but I do use clothes. Um, and they are CRMs that allow me to digitally call my client and have everything recorded. So my team can listen to me. Um, and that's good when you have a team that really wants to, you're the engine, right? And you need to teach them on how to build and scale. Close is a great resource, right? Um, they also have email sequencing. Um, and you can also drop video marketing in there as well. And they have SMS. And you can create a structure of a little bit of both. Um, inside of our community, we talk a lot about using the CRM close. Video marketing tools that I use is bombbomb.com. I just recently started using them a couple months ago. 
fantastic software. I have used Loom for a really, really long time, but I switched to BombBomb um, in my day-to-day -day sales marketing, and I love it. I absolutely love it. Inside of our resources, we talk about using video and how video has been an absolutely a fantastic way to build relationships. Um, I would not say that I build relationships off the get-go with that, um, but it is a great way to build a complete reverse sales 101 or a referral system. You're going to have to get into my community for me to talk a little bit about that. Sorry. The business social media, I love LinkedIn. It's a great way. If you do get on LinkedIn, make sure you're posting every day or at least every other day and stay positive in the fact that you're giving back to that community. The best way to get following on LinkedIn is to not necessarily talk about yourself all the time from an I perspective like Facebook, but from a we perspective and how we as, as, as a social media platform like LinkedIn can build in and have like-minded business professionals. Um, it's not a place where you would put your uh, picture of your food or, you know, in some case I do take pictures of my kids once in a while when I can now spin it from a business standpoint and then email marketing, having fun with email marketing, making it very personable. Um, yes, you can send I from T and T transport have been doing business for the last 23 years. I specialize in oversized in Mexico and would love the opportunity to work with you. Would you have a shipment I could move? You're getting right to the point. You wouldn't do that if you were face to face with someone. Well, why do you feel like it is a way to do business today? So in our compendium, as well as our community, we talk about the do's and don'ts of email marketing, how to make it personalized and how to bring yourself to the table. Because once they get to know you, they're going to buy you. And, and it's plain and simple. Plain and simple on how it goes. Um, selling your services for a price and a cost, um, you have to decide that's going to be the hardest part. Truthfully, that's going to be the hardest part is rating what your services are. Rating, there's a lot of tools out there, and we have a markup calculator that's out on my website. You definitely can get a hold of that will help you along with a video that's for free. I would, you know, I'll jump it down in the bottom here as well that will help you be able to market your services, but it's going to be the number one. It's where you're going to need mentor. It's where you're going to need a community. It's where you're going to need to find and do a lot of research because once you do, you're able to now build a profitable business, right? The, the average is about 15% margin, but we're going to talk that a little bit later. Provide the shipper with your initial information upon their request. So once you have gotten the sale, I guess you wouldn't say sale, or once you've gotten a quote, or even before that, and a customer asks you, send over your information. I really, because it's my first email to them, and I've never emailed them before, I usually don't put an attachment. I just write, here's my information below if you need to contact me if there's anything else you need to set up for your accounting department let me know once they respond back to me then i will return it with a pdf file because i don't want to land in their in their spam by having that pdf right um, i'm going to continue to do follow-up with that sales pipeline till i receive that quote request um, once I receive that quote request, then I will now um, move it to my sales pipeline. I have five categories. The first category is potential um, in my CRM. The second category is interested, meaning I've received an email address and I'm pursuing them. So now I can start implementing video marketing. Then I move to my third one, which is um, negotiating, which is like I'm quoting. Um, and again, I'm not afraid to quote and I'm not afraid to say that I've messed up or I'm not afraid to say, you know what, your market is out of my realm, but let me have a few weeks to work on it. I, I build relationships based on being absolutely hundred percent authentic. I never bite off more than I can chew. Um, and then they become a customer by filling out that credit app that we early talked about. Um, and then it moves on to the shipper sends you a quote 
when they learn, send you a quote right here on the link is how to spot to quote. This is a basic calculator. It's a basic tool, but it does not stop there. You need to build relationships with reliable networks of carriers um, to get the best quote. They're the ones that are on the ground. And so once you have a quote, don't stop just because you quoted and you were too high because you used this tool and maybe you didn't spend enough time at it. The more time you spend on the ground with carriers, finding those carriers, the amount of time you spend networking will pay off. It will pay off and then you will dominate that market. And when you dominate that market, you dominate that region. When you dominate that region, you dominate that comp commodity. And then from there, it's all uphill when it comes to reverse sales. Again, you need to get into our community. Your company quotes this shipment, right? So we quote the shipment, we give them the quote. And then what happens after that, right? Sweet deal, sweet deal, sweet deal, right? And before we go any further, let me just stop here and talk about bomb bomb, talk about clothes and the top about Apollo before we go into what happens next. So really quickly, there is a sweet deal to sign up, right? You can get a trial for bomb bomb. You can get a trial for clothes and you get a trial for Apollo.io, right? Hold up. I'm serious. Now check out my affiliate links at the bottom and um, make sure you get into those beautiful resources that I personally use um, every day. The shipper awards your company the shipment. That's what happens next. So they can award it in two different ways. They can award it formally with a release. The release will show all the details of the shipping, including the price. That's important to send to your factoring company, or that's important if you're self-funded to send with your invoice when you want to get paid, right? And then informally would be verbally. If you do that, cover CYA, cover your butt, follow up with an email to dictate your agreement in writing. So some of the questions you might ask a shipper when they give you the shipment is, what time does it pick up and deliver? What time is the shipper city address, the constant city address? whether it's a flatbed, whether it is a van, um, you're going to want to know all of your equipment types because flatbed will require some kind of securement while as vans require load locks, you know, flatbed can be coil racks, tarps, etc. But you wouldn't ask them if they need coil racks when it's rebar. So know your commodities, right? Know your commodities. That's going to be super important in your game. Weight of the shipment and we agreed on this price. Yeah. Once they have done that, you, of course, you know, you need to have approved shipper credit. So once they award it to you immediately, you're going to want to send them a credit application um, to um, do terms or ask them if they could um, send them their financial sheet so you can do a quick review um, so you can get, you know, get it over to corporate is how I put it. And if you're self-funded, there's ways you can look at Ansonia Credit, Trans Credit, and CompuNet Credit, or CoreLogic. Those are the three top transportation providers. Inside of our community, we really dig deep um, into how you can build credit being self-funded. Um, but again, if you don't understand how any of these three sites, this is some homework where you can go um, and ask for demos that will teach you on how to do it. And then, of course, Dens and Bradstreet is also a resource um, and then factoring company, if you use somebody like denim.com, maybe use their platform. You can use their platform to establish credit. Once you've gotten a credit approval, just because you get denied credit, I do want to say, let's say denim denies credit on the shipper. That doesn't mean that the deal's done. Just remember there are other ways in which you can now get credit. Have a form where it says your wiring instructions. And believe me, you need to know the difference by asking your bank the difference between ACH and wire because they're sometimes different and sometimes they're the same. Um, so you'll want to ask that and then create a letterhead with your information to say, hey, you weren't approved for credit this time. However, we can still do this shipment and here is our wiring instructions. Once you get the wire in your bank, then you can now get the carrier, right? Verify location, shipper, consignee, and hours of operation. 
So once you've gotten that order, you're going to put it into your TMS software and you're going to verify those locations, the shipper and constant hours of operation. Once you've verified those hours, then you can now build into a number 11. You're going to create that shipment in your TMS software. You can have an in-house one. Um, we have one on our website that's an Excel spreadsheet. It's a Google sheet to be exact um, that you can use. And some of my clients, some of my coaching clients have used it for their first year when they didn't want to have a lot of expenses. And there's a video that shows you how to use it. Also a send ITS dispatch DAT and Algex are some of the top ones. Um, and then once you put that information into your software, again, I would get some, once you decide on a TMS software, you'll want to go get training. Then you're going to secure a carrier to fill out the shipper request. Um, how you do that is by, you know, going on a load board. Maybe you already have the carrier already readily available um, because you did that prior to quoting. Um, but most of the time as a brand new startup, you would now, you know, use, you know, load boards to secure that, fill that request. Um, once you have received that request and you've jotted down all the things, Again, in my community, we have calls that you can listen to um, between my team and myself um, with carriers so you can exactly know what to say and what questions to ask um, when it comes. And again, this is just a workflow, so it has nothing to do exactly with, you know, giving you training. All right. Send the carrier packet to the carrier for completion. We have an electronic compliant um, electronic packet that we use for JotForm. And I have an international team that can set this up and do compliance training for $200. Um, they are an international team that is very, very versed in, again, they're not 100%, they're not a legal team, but they can get you up and running for a minimal amount. So if you would like to have that, down at the bottom, there is an email address or a link that you can now jump onto. Um, in order to hire them to help you with that free version of an electronic packet. Otherwise, you can use a service uh, called mycarrierpackets.com. It's based on how many um, packets you send out a month or a truck stop product called RMIS. Once carrier compliance audits the carrier for eligibility, or if you're a startup, you would have wear that hat, you know, cradle to grave hat. You would audit the carrier for eligibility. That's why you need to know what are you looking for? You know, there's the Federal Motor Carrier website that you want to look for how long they've been in business and do you have terms in which they are in business? Are you going to bring on carriers that are 30 days, 60 days, you know, 90 days or a year or less? That's one of the requirements. Do you, you have to decide, you know, what kind of carriers you're going to bring on to your company because this the, the less they've been in business without inspections, and again, that's on the safety record of um, a safety website that you can now look at. And these are things that you, you know, my international team can teach you about the carrier ed eligibility. Because if they don't have any inspections, how do you know it's not being double brokered? And that's one of the negatives of our industry is there's a lot of fraud when it comes to double brokering. So you wanna have that availability of resources to be able to teach you on how to properly audit a carrier. Because if you don't audit a carrier properly, it can turn ugly, really, really ugly. So then you're gonna set up appointments based on the carrier schedule or their hours of service. I always say, ask the carrier. They know best because they know their hours. Or from the beginning, if you have specific appointments that your customer wants, you can now do that prior to um, talk about that prior to booking the load and they understand what it needs to be done. Also, some of the locations are first come first serve facilities, um, which means that when the driver gets there is when they get unloaded based on, you know, in line, right? And then you're going to send a rate confirmation um, to the carrier. You can use um, an a Google sheet like that's on my website that you can download and I'll put that link down in the bottom um, as well as you could use um, a TMS software like Ascend, et cetera, ITS. Once you have sent the rate confirmation, they agree to it, the carrier agrees to it, you're going to receive the rate confirmation signed by the carrier back to you. Then you're going to track the shipment. 
And this is the most beautiful part of the whole part of this shipment. Seeing your shipment pick up for the first time, I recommend taking pictures. It's like when you walk into a restaurant, you see the dollar bill um, on the wall of your first dollar bill that you ever got. You know, we, we, we took a picture of our first check that we got. Um, we took, we have video and pictures of our first shipment. It's a beautiful thing. Beautiful thing. Also, you get to know the product and how it's loaded. So your drivers are literally teaching you. So once you track the shipment, this is our process. And this process is a great way to get more referrals. Um, but it's up to you on how you want to be a broker, or what your customer expects. Um, but this is, you know, what we do for the majority of our clients. We up the once we get the shipment, we update the client with our tracking pro as well as their pro in an email, and we give them an ETA to pick up. Once they arrive at the origin, we email the customer again. Once the, the shipment is picked up, we email the customer again. Once we update the client, we update them twice a day. Then we update the client at the arrival of destination, and then we update the client at delivery. We do do something that's called reverse sales 101 that's not included in here. Um, I'm not going to talk about it because it's a little bit of a secret in my group. Um, but it talks about how if you do this right, the one client can become three or four clients. You're hearing me right. I'm getting low. One client has the potential to be three or four clients if you do this right, all right? 19, receive a POD, POD, a proof of delivery. Some clients require proof of delivery in order to, for you to get paid. Um, so knowing what your customer's expectations are is by calling their accounts payable department or speaking to the person who gave you the shipment to know whether that is, but always, I always get the POD anyways. Um, and then 20 or 21 is, are you self-funded? If you're self-funded, these are the steps. You're going to invoice the client with an invoice. You're going to add that release. Remember that ship, the, the paper or the email or the Excel spreadsheet or the PDF that shows where it's picking up and delivering that you receive from the client with the amount of money they that you two agreed on. Um, and then you're going to add the POD. You're going to receive payment from the client on your agreed terms. You're going to pay the carrier bill based on your agree, agreed terms, and you're going to receive the profit once the transaction is completed. That's for self-funding. Number 21 is outsource funding. Somebody like Denim, maybe a factoring company. You would send the POD to the outsource company, the factoring based on the requirements, or they will receive an invoice from the carrier. The outsource company invoices the client, the outsource company pays the carrier. You receive your profit after their charges. So whatever the factoring company is charging you, whether it's, you know, one and a half percent to three percent, usually um, you'll receive that profit or that net profit. Now, do you know, are you getting something today? Do you know that the average load pays from the customer is eighteen hundred dollars? The average profit margin is 15%. The average profit is $270 per load. If you're an average freight broker with a book of business worth $1 million, all right, are you listening? Worth $1 million, you can move, that will be moving 555 loads per year on average, 11 loads per week, or two loads per day. And that is easy to do, right? Very easy to do. 555 loads equals about 150,000 in gross profit per year. If you were to give up 3% of your money to a factoring company, you would give up $4,500 of that, I'm sorry, you would give up, um, 3% of the million, 
So you would give up $30,000 to a factoring company to give you cash flow. I'm not saying it's against anything that they're doing. Okay. They all have to make their money too. Right. But keep that in mind when you're going that route on whether or not you want to go the fast route with a factoring company, or if you want to go the slow and burn route in our community, we talk a lot about that because you need to have both sides. Both sides are beneficial, but you have to be well educated. So again, I say to you, are you an average? Are you a $1 million sales book of business person? No, you're not. Join our community to the tip, the scale, and become a sales genius. Again, my name is Melissa Wokolo. I hope you found this to be beneficial. If you have, please share it and be sure to share it with your friends, um, your family, or anyone who wants to get into the freight broker game. And I will talk to you in our next live. Did that video blow your mind or what? So much information. Thanks for watching. Hit the subscribe button and hit the bell for notifications.